Welcome to the Smack Happy Design Video Cast, where we explore all things web and marketing. With your hosts, Nicole and Danielle. Welcome to the Smack Happy Video Cast, episode number eight. Today we have Melinda Lee, a speaking success coach, and we're going to talk to her about how to fall in love with public speaking the number one human fear. Uh, Welcome, Melinda. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yes, thank you so much, Nicole, Danielle, for having me. My name is Melinda. I am located here in San Francisco, born and raised. Uh, I have three sisters, one brother, and so I'm the eldest. I have a master's of arts in organizational psychology. I'm really into using our psychology to meeting business results. I have over 15 years of strategic communication um, and sales experience in corporate. And so now I'm here. Uh, My passion really is to help women amplify their voices and really be able to talk about their mission in a bigger, more visible, effective way so they could build their business. And so it's really good to be here. I'm looking forward to today and just going to have fun. Awesome. Um, Okay, I guess I will go again. Uh, Well, I guess for the first time, if you're listening for the first time, it's the first time I'm going. But um, I thought about like how I introduced myself. I just thought I'd throw this out there. Um, And I always say the same thing. So if there's somebody that's an avid listener, maybe I'll change it up today. So I'm Danielle Ayera. I've been with Nicole for about two years now. Um, I think I have now 11 years of experience and different kinds of marketing things. So um, I like everything, but my specialties are mostly SEO content um, and messaging, really. I really like messaging and making sure, you know, um, everyone is saying what they really want to say and, and reaching the right people that they want to reach. And I'm a mom. I live in Pittsburgh. Um, and I think those are the two like fun things I was going to add to my, my thing today. So, um, and those things are very important to me. I like where I live. I like my little boy. He's the best and go Nicole. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you. Uh, so I'm Nicole. I am the owner and founder of Smack Happy Design, which I've been running for about 10 years now. And I've got a wonderful team of people uh, like Danielle working with us. Um, we mostly do website design and some marketing, SEO and social media. Um, really anything you do online, we help you with. So. Um, we started this podcast slash video cast to help other small businesses. And so today we're going to do that by talking about public speaking. Um, so how do you fall in love with public speaking? <laughs> That's the magic question because yeah. yes, falling in love and public speaking just don't go together. No. <laughs> you don't hear it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a number one human fear. Mm-hmm. And, and then we wonder why. We wonder why. And then when we ask ourselves, okay, it's time to go do some public speaking. Our hands may get sweaty, our hearts are racing. And many of us carry around this fear from maybe a a experience, a traumatic experience we may have had one time. And then going forward, we imagine the worst at any opportunity that we can get from speaking. And so some of these fears prevent us. And maybe you never even had this experience, but some scientists and researchers have found that it could be from primitive ages when we didn't want to be left out of the tribe if we say something funny or we're odd or left out of the tribe. And so wherever these fears come from, it's normal. We have it. And the first way to really overcome some of these fears is to be to acknowledge it, to say, hey, they're there. I have fears. I have fears. I'm a speaking success coach and I still have these fears, but I've learned to work with it. Even if it's a challenge, I've learned to just have fun with it and accept myself. And so one of the things that I do with my clients is learn to practice self-acceptance. And the more we can accept who we are, love ourselves for who we are, the more we can slowly start to overcome some of those fears. Mm -hmm. I think at first guess, um, 
I think, at least for me anyways, like part of it would be um, like everything has to be perfect. Right. Right. And it's not going to be perfect. You're possibly going to flub some words. And so maybe like by, <clears throat> by accepting yourself and just like that kind of goes with that, like accepting that, hey, you might mess up, but it's okay. Right. Yeah. Yes. And I don't know if this is the same for a lot of people. And Melinda, you can probably share some insight into this too. I remember when, um, you know, I was first kind of introduced to formal public speaking whenever I had to take my billion communications classes in my last couple of years of college. And um, one of the things that I noticed like about me, and I don't know if this is like I said, like it's my personality or if it's something, you know, that's common amongst a lot of people, but when it was something about that I really liked to talk about or that I really felt, you know, passionate about talking about, it was so much easier to do that. So it's like, I don't, I guess it just depends on what situation you're in maybe even because if I was presented with like, okay, you're going to do this topic and it has to be within, you know, these, you know, rules, set of rules, blah, blah, blah. Like that would be kind of like, you know, give you that anxiety a little bit, maybe. I mean, yeah. you're not familiar with it. You have to learn about what you're talking about, that kind of thing. So I guess there's like different sorts of challenges with like, depending on like what, you know, kind of thing you're in. I mean, do you, do you see that like the more people are passionate about what they're talking about, it's easier for them to do? And I mean, what do you think about that? Yes. Good question, Danielle. And good question, Nicole. I'm going to address both of them. And, and that's why I left corporate. <laughs> We can talk about whatever we want pretty much as an entrepreneur and I'm speaking to an entrepreneurial audience. We can choose what we want to talk about. And the more we let go of these fears and really start to find the gems of who we are. I, I told you, like I mentioned, I didn't want to be a speaking success coach. I had so much fear around it. Hell no, am I, am I going to be associated with Toastmasters? No, it's boring. I don't think speaking is fun. I really didn't. I had so much fear around it and I finally let go of this fear and realized this is who I am. I'm going to accept who I am. And the more I accepted it and the more I had an unconditional love for myself, I was able to find these gems and this uniqueness that I can bring to help my clients and really hone in on a very specific and unique message. And going back to Daniel, what you're saying about when we can connect to who we truly are after letting go of these fears and accepting that this is a wonderful, unique, extraordinary message. It's not an ordinary message. We're extraordinary, unique human beings with a powerful message. And when we can tap into that and really hone into that and then bring in um, the structure of how to create a compelling message. I wouldn't throw my clients out to the wolves and have no structure. There is a proper structure to conveying our thoughts in a well-organized way, so it's logical. And then, and then bringing in the self-acceptance. There are always gonna be times where this audience is not going to accept us and there are gonna be times where they're not, they are. And we say it, our truth, no matter what happens, no matter the outcome. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, so let's see, our next question is, what do you believe that your top three tips would be for, um, I guess, public speaking? Mm -hmm. either, either for public speaking or for trying to let go of the fear. Yeah. Maybe you have yeah. Like different tips for both, or maybe they're the same. Yeah, great point. Yeah. Yeah, the, the t they're, they're actually interconnected. Mm -hmm. The top three, it's the three Ps of public speaking. The first one is plan, plan to have a compelling, organized approach to speaking. Organize your way of creating content so we're not having to spend so much time recreating new content. It's just a systematic, organized approach. And plan to have it be compelling. Don't just unoriginal, boring, mainstream. It's going to be compelling. Mm -hmm. Number two, practice. Practice, leverage all the opportunities that we have as an opportunity, as an entrepreneur, you go to so many networking events. Once you know your core message, practice, get up, raise your hand, go to the event and be prepared to speak. Be prepared to be the event. Don't just sit around and be in the chair and watch other people speak. I know it's hard, but just really be prepared to speak. 
practice self-love. Self-love is number is along the lines of practice, practicing our own self-love, um, doing heart-centered. I do a lot of meditations with my clients and really letting go of the fear, bringing in self-acceptance and self-love for ourselves. It's not going to be perfect. We're going to stutter over our words. But just practice with finding the truth, finding the happiness, the fun in the moment. Mm -hmm. And then the third one um, to the key to public speaking is presence. Plan, practice, and presence. Mm -hmm. Presence, um, you know, connecting with your audience, even if we're not going to do it for yourself. Even if I said, I hate public speaking because I just don't want to be in the spotlight. I don't want to shine. And... And maybe perhaps if you could think about it one way is if you don't do it for yourself, maybe if you have enough compassion and you want to be, and you have compassion and desire to help your clients, then speak for your clients, connect with your clients because they need you. And many speakers think that I am the, the shine, the spotlight, the star. Actually, I tell my uh, clients that, you're not the star. You're actually the little Yoda on the shoulder. You're the Yoda whispering, you know, guiding, guiding because then your audience can actually experience what it's like to be the hero. They're the hero. We're not the heroes. We're just delivering the message. Interesting. That's, yeah. That's a different way to think about it. Yeah. It actually make like thinking about it that way actually makes it seem a little less like, the spotlight all on you, you know, yeah, right. Kind of takes right. it away a little bit, and then you also think of Yoda, which is great. Um, yeah, we can think of Yoda. Maybe we can put some long hair on Yoda yeah. with some lipstick, and <laughs> that'd be some great like photoshopping. Yeah. Yeah. Have some, like video or pictures. Uh -huh. of you uh -huh. We're not the yeah. The spot the spotlight is the audience. The yeah. spotlight help them to experience what is what they're in right now. Their pain, just for a split second, what it could be like. Mm hmm. What sense. is possible? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's really fascinating. So you're you're kind of like just shifting the whole mindset of what it's like to be up on stage yeah. if you look at it that way. Yes. Yeah, it definitely detracts from the uh, imagine everybody naked sort of thing. <laughs> well, yes. And then another <laughs> another tip is that we're the energy. We're all interconnected. We have this powerful energy fields. Um, research, researchers have found that we do emit electromagnetic fields. And so we're, when I'm telling a story about something, an experience, our, our audience feels it just as much. If I'm telling about a story about like a surfer, a monkey surfer with a tutu surfing <laughs> and smiling, then my audience might smile too. <laughs> so, so we feel it. We feel each other's energy. And so when, as a speaker, it's very challenging, but to manage it and just have that awareness that we can manage the energy alongside yeah. with the audience and also bring them along the journey with us. Um, it's, we're all, we're all together in mm -hmm. the room. It's a magical experience. And to, to actually just experience that, that magic. Uh, I don't think people get that opportunity and realize that because they're really up in their head, really speaking from, okay, what am I supposed to say? How am I supposed to say, you know, they're really missing the opportunity to connect in a deeper level with the audience. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What's the largest audience you've spoken to? Um, it's not too, maybe a hundred. So not terribly, but I have a virtual reality <laughs> Are we talking about live audience or virtual reality? So I, uh, with my clients, I have a virtual reality uh, machine that can go up to 100, 150 audience size. Oh. And so, the, you know, to help them practice with a virtual audience uh, to really get, get comfortable before they even go into the real live audience. Wow, that is really cool. Thank you. <laughs> you know since we're in san francisco i thought the technology yeah. uh, made sense yeah because really i know cool. vr is like up and coming new thing and like yeah. you know lots of businesses are trying to figure out how to use it and that is yeah. an excellent use of it yeah yeah and so the cool thing about that is actually it tracks your eye contact it tracks your vocal variety you get a report at the end 
to, oh. to say you are missing certain areas of the audience. You miss that section. You have a good eye contact over here on the left side, but you're missing the right side. And so it will do all time for to, a report. That is so fancy. Yeah. That's cool. I guess if you really wanted to, you could uh, eventually, you know, get all the data that you had yeah um, and submit some sort of report or something and even have that for for um you know something to provide people and, and show them you know this is where this comes from you know mm -hmm. it's, it shows in the data it's it's right here you know that's mm -hmm. that's a really cool piece uh, i mean i'm just getting like nerded out here but there's a really that's a really cool piece of thing, you know, <laughs> the nerdy and, right you know, thank just you for thank people you. in general that's to yeah. see understand how that kind of thing really works yeah, I mean, we want to track how we're doing. We want to track um, some data, you guys with the SEO and tracking. If we're going to do something, we might as well track our results. I think tracking your eye movements is a lot more exciting than SEO for me. <laughs> no, nah, I don't know about that. Come on. <laughs> the power of SEO. You have a lot of power um, yeah. to be able to track where people are browsing. and That's true. Mm -hmm. It's true. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, I had a question before we ask our question that we want to ask because I'm super interested to know. So yes. have you ever worked with any hearing impaired or deaf clients? No. Yeah. And you know, it's, it's so this is why I'm asking because so I, you know, I'm involved a little bit with deaf community, my brother's deaf. Um, mm. And I'm wondering if this is even a problem for, for deaf people because you're already it's like a confidence level is, is, is different because it's a different way of communicating and you're, you're so emotional and you're putting a lot of your body work into it and everything. And it just was like, I just was thinking of, I wonder what the differences would be there um, in between, you know, public speaking for somebody who's signing versus someone who's speaking, which mm -hmm. technically they're both speaking. It's just in a different way. You know, yeah. that's not vocal. Um, so anyway, I don't know, just kind of a thought. I, I wondered how that would work, but um, yeah. just I'd be really oh. interested to, to yeah. meet him or get a chance to actually learn about some of his, if he has any fears or what if, you know, his experiences are with public speaking and to know, to really just understand where his fears are, if he has any. Um, yeah, that'd be interesting. He, he's yeah. actually teaching a class right now, right. so that might pretty, I mean, that might be related, I think, you know, standing in front of a group of, I don't know, 10 people, maybe, um, mm -hmm. and teaching them sign language. Yeah, I mean, like you said, if it's a different type, type of communication, but it's still communication, we all inherently as human beings have this fear of just being left out of the tribe. Yeah. You know, messing up, not saying the right things, and just fear of left being left out is what it ultimately comes down to. And so... As yeah. he probably experiences some of the, these fears at certain levels, yeah. That's super interesting. Yeah, I definitely mm -hmm. want to talk to him now <laughs> and ask him about that. Um, mm -hmm. So I guess, uh, did you have anything that you wanted to add, Nicole, or do you want to? Should we ask our next question? I, I'm just loving this because um, this is a subject that you know I'm not super familiar about and. Public speaking is like so far away from anything that I've ever been involved with. It, it's definitely, I'm one of those people that probably with, you know, the rest of us that's afraid of it. Um, and so uh, I guess leading in the next question. So what is the most common problem that people face? I think that, well, with the entrepreneurs, I see that they go up and they, they have the courage to, deliver and they do the training or they do a presentation, I think that a lot of times they're ringing it sometimes or they, they could put some more thought into who their audience is and really do their homework with um, what problem they're trying to solve and really make a compelling speech and really do the best that they can to capitalize on these speaking opportunities. And so it's, it is a difference between, you know, creating a website on our own is possible or hiring a fantastic team to really create this phenomenal website that will attract clients and get you more clients and create more clients through your website. And so it is possible for entrepreneurs to go out there and do the speaking 
at the same time, uh, we're missing out on certain opportunities that had you just put in a little bit more time with a little bit of training, a little bit of coaching to really create more clients for yourself and really be seen as the expert and show more visibility in that way. Um, mm -hmm. So that, that yeah. kind of brings up a great point. Like why, why should someone want to even speak? Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So those are, those are, you just touched on a couple of them. Like one is you know, to try and gain more clients Two to show your expertise and like be a thought leader. Are there any other like main key points? I think that to hone in on our message, speaking is the best way. So a lot of times the entrepreneurs go out there. When we start a business, I hear a lot of, it gets really complicated. When entrepreneurs will start to post online, they'll start to, um, you know, just because they want to start creating engagement, Facebook. I think that sometimes they, really if they just take took a little time to hone in on their message because then posting online could get really time consuming and without and they then they don't have a call to action so they'll, they'll start creating these engagements these conversations online and they really haven't thought okay what is my purpose what is my real message that i'm trying to draw out why am i doing this speaking will help you to really fine tune the purpose of your message, the problem you're helping to solve, and a call to action. And hone in on this information. And then from there you can, it's transferable, right? To the structure of how to create the content is transferable to online uses, uh, blogs, or social media. And But I think that one thing is just building trust. It's the best way to build trust because you're right there in front of your clients. Uh, yeah. yeah. It, it, it almost seems like, too, that it kind of will help you stand out a little bit amongst the majority of people that probably have gone away a little bit from being in front of people, literally, and yeah. sitting, you know, behind the computer and trying to get the messaging out that way. And, well, I know we're a digital marketing company, so, you know, that's a lot of what we do. You know, we, we arm everything from you know, c coding and design and, you know, the it's SEO when the data and everything. But um, I think that, uh, you know, a, a way to show, I guess, that you're, you're there, you know, it's not just you doing these things behind the scenes, um, getting yourself out in front of people. I mean, there's, there's definitely some benefits to it to make yourself, you know, stand out from the rest as well. And it made me think of like, um, you know, my generation and, and younger, like, mm -hmm. I don't know, twenties, like thirties, um, we kind of do that a lot more, mm -hmm. you know, we're texting, we're not calling people anymore. It's like really a different kind of way of communicating. And so while you probably need to like figure that out, especially if like you're a marketer or something, right. you probably are better off like trying, you know, again, trying to be different and, and being that person who's not going to just send a text message. You're going to call someone or, you know, you're going to be in front of someone speaking versus, you know, trying to send a bunch of messages out on social media or something, whatever. But um, I don't know if I'm making a point there, but that's what I thought about um, when you were talking about getting yourself out there and, and being in front of people. I, I think that there's a power, there's so much power with online. There's a lot of power behind it. If you are not getting the results that you're looking for through online messaging, then you really have to come down with, um, is your core messaging, is the purpose of what you're saying online working? If it's not, then I think that uh, an entrepreneur could spend a little bit more time honing in on that mm -hmm. and really connecting with their audience at a deeper level and understanding how it is that you can serve your clients and you could do that only through conversations in person and do yeah. that through really meeting with your clients so that you can understand where they're coming from speak to them heart to heart because a lot of times when you're on social media you're, it, it, there's you're, you're losing a connection you're losing a little really intimate space that um, when you first start in business um, mm -hmm. to be able to have this connection um, and just jump online, uh, it, you're kind of, um, you might need to backtrack a little bit. And like you said, you might be filling our time with things that, um, 
without the connection with our clients in the beginning, um, you're missing out. Yeah. And so, yeah, and I, I do a lot of work with my clients with really understanding your clients, the problems you help solve, really having these intimate connections as a relationship from a relationship standpoint first, and, and then building your clients from that space. Because uh, it's a fundamental skill. Being able to connect with someone heart to heart, one to one, and then at an audience level is a fundamental skill as an entrepreneur uh, in any business. Um, if you're going to get big, you got to really be able to connect with yourself, with your one to one clients, and then with the audience. Yeah. Yeah. Is there anything you wanted to add, Nicole? Um, I feel like I always kind of try to just talk, you know. And yeah, I, I just talk over you. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I guess, were there any other main points that you wanted to make sure you covered, Melinda? Hmm. Have a great website by Smack Happy Design. <laughs> 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 yeah, like, you know, once you do the speaking and you tell everyone and go to this website, <clears throat> uh, you need to have a good landing page to, right. to follow through on. Otherwise, you're wasting your time, right? Yes. Yes. Because you're yeah. following up with their clients. How do they connect with you? They're going to go to your website. They're going to log in. They're going to see your website. And then, and then because it's a great design, they're going to enter in their email address. And so that, you know, we can stay connected going forward, yeah. even after the speaking event. Mm -hmm. I think it's so exciting too, because a lot of the podcasts and people that we've spoken to in the past, including yourself, Melinda, um, it comes full circle because it's like, okay, well, what does public speaking have to do with like us and like, you know, creating websites and things like that. So we just explained it and we just love people that care about what they're saying. And, you know, even if they don't know how to say it yet, you know, we, we love trying to help people figure that out and like kind of portray that design wise. And, you know, all, all the technical stuff is stuff that, um, you know, we know that we need to do and we, it's, it's just as important, but, you know, I think as like creatives and people who care about what they do and we care about each other and we really care about that connection, like with the person and the client, everything that, that really translates to, you know, the work that we put out there as well. So, I mean, just from speaking, you know, say we were one of your clients, I mean, just from that, you know, that's a benefit right there. You know, that's where we're, we're able to connect more with our clients because of, you know, the connections that we made previous to like, you know, all of the technical by the book stuff. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah. I like that last final thought that you had there. That was exciting. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I, I guess, are we looking for the fun question? Are we going to do the fun question? Yeah, yeah I was going to ask so, the fun question. Go ahead. Why don't you ask the fun question? So can you share with us maybe your craziest client experience? Yes. This is a funny question. Because... Uh, I've been in business five years. I started off helping corporate clients and recent, you know, probably the past two years, it's really honing in on just women. Cause I, I believe that we are the generation to really have that power to step up to, to be visible. We, our parents, our grandparents, our mothers have never had this opportunity. We are the generation to do it. And so I honed in on, I'm really wanting to help build more women speakers, whether in business or in corporate. And so when I first started out, I, uh, I knew I had the passion, I had the desire, and I had women that were helping in corporate. They've already had some level of public speaking experience. And so it was a matter of just honing in on their message and giving them some guidance with speaking. I had one client, which was really afraid. She was so scared. She didn't want to do, I mean, she had the desire, but she just, the thought of it just made her really sick. And oh. so, <laughs> and this, you know, but then just through working with her and really doing meditation on a daily basis, I actually had her do meditation every day before her speaking event. And she did it. 
when she did it, she called me and she was so excited because she created six new clients for herself. She was at the beginning of her business. I just was, I, I couldn't believe it myself sometimes. <laughs> like, wow, <laughs> I couldn't, because her fear, she had such great fear. And then she actually invited me to a little dinner with her and her clients. And I didn't know this, but then she presented me. She said, hey, and I really want to just introduce Melinda. Uh, she's helped me with the speaking. And then she gave me this Yoda doll. She gave me the Yoda doll. And, she, you know, so she thanked me. And so that was just really, I just thought that was the craziest moment for me. <laughs> yeah, that's so thoughtful, too. So, like, you know that you actually touch somebody in a way that, you know, you, you probably didn't realize you did, you know, it's, that's really cool. That's a cool story. Thank you. Yeah, no, it's a great, I still agree have the Yoda. Story. Yeah, I yeah. do. I don't want to leave <laughs> my sister. Yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. So thank you. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Yeah. Um, can you go ahead and share with people how they can find you if they would like to learn how to speak better? Yes, I have a speaking program coming up. It's going to start in April, but anybody that comes in right now has access to the private Facebook group. Um, my speaking, my page is www.iempowerall.com. That's my website. You can also call me 650-207-1342. Uh, but the best way to reach me is through my website and you can find more information and also my contact over there too. So again, it's um, iempowerall.com. So I'll see you soon. All right, thank you so much. Um, and then if you wanna get the show notes, we'll include uh, Melinda's website and some of the tips that she provided. Um, you can get those at smackhappy.com slash videocast. Um, thank you for joining today where we explore all things web and marketing. Until next time, everybody. Okay. Thank bye. you. Bye-bye. Till next time. Thank you for listening to the Smack Happy Design videocast. For more information and downloads, visit smackhappy.com forward slash videocast, where you'll find more episodes and the opportunity to subscribe on YouTube or iTunes. You can also sign up for our newsletter delivered to your inbox monthly. And if you enjoyed this episode, please share it with your friends and colleagues. Again, that's smackhappy.com forward slash videocast. See you next time.